Hello everybody, welcome back to another reading. Today we're taking a look at the case of the York Huns, who was two years old by the time they disappeared on the 10th of July in 2015, around 2.40 p.m. His parents and his great-grandfather and a friend of his great-grandfather had gone with him uh, on a camping trip at Timber Creek in Idaho. And I believe that the parents decided quite impromptu or very unexpectedly to go fishing as well while they were there because there was a river near their campsite. At least that's what I gathered. And uh, it was during the time of this fishing trip that Dior disappeared. According to the parents who went fishing along with the friend Isaac, uh, they thought that Dior was with Grandfather Bob. And Grandfather Bob thought, who was back at the camp, that uh, Dior was with uh, the parents and the friend. Turns out that uh, he was with neither, at least uh, according to their testimonies. Um, when they made the 911 call, he said 911 call, the mother that I heard, they said that he had been playing under a tree with his cars and he'd been wearing a uh, camo jacket, uh, blue pajama pants, and, and that he had been missing uh, for about an hour, according to what I heard on the 911 call. Now, strangely enough, uh, nobody can really confirm that he was actually there at the campsite. There are claims that he was taken to the store with his parents uh, that earlier that day, but there's no CCTV footage to uh, uh, confirm this, nor are there witness statements other than the people outside the family who say that they saw him there. And what else is very mysterious is the fact that they said that he was playing with those Matchbox cars and that he was wearing that camo jacket. But both of those items were found in the apartment back home. So how could they uh, claim he was wearing that if it's also back home? Or was he not wearing those? Or did the clothes come back somehow on the Matchbox cards? No idea. So throughout the years, the uh, parents and the great-grandfather and the friend of the great-grandfather have been interviewed repeatedly. And pretty much everybody who has been involved with the case find that the statements of the parents in particular keep changing and their um, lie detector tests keep coming back as failed. And what I found was interesting is that both the parents kept pointing towards Isaac as, oh, this guy is suspicious. He said this and he said that. And I thought that was kind of strange what he said there and did there. But uh, according to the same people who were like, oh, the parents are... Uh, lying a lot or at least telling different stories a lot uh the uh these people also claim that isaac is the one that's only really stuck to his story from the beginning hasn't really changed his story of course he was there and he does claim and i believe also bob does also claim to have seen dior there and if they know anything about what happened to him uh, they're not talking as well as the parents are also not really talking well they're talking but they're not talking uh the way that you would expect parents of a missing child to talk. So since we don't really know anything about this case, or at least we don't know what happened to Dior, uh, people asked me if I wanted to do a tarot reading, which is what we're going to do today. We are starting off with the vice versa deck, which is already on the table, uh, which is uh, this one in case you wanted to purchase one for yourself. It's the deck with the uh, double-sided cards, which is very interesting because you can look at uh, two sides of the same coin. For any further questions, I'm moving on to the Muse deck, which is this one, and it has more dream-like images and also different names for different suits, but okay, we'll uh, struggle through there. Usually the deck where I make the most mistakes in naming cards, but okay, that's beside the point. Um, if you wanted me to do a reading on a certain case, make sure to check out the description in the video because there is a link there to a Google form. You can uh, leave an anonymous tip there or at least an anonymous uh, submission of a person's name or a case name it has to be a public case you can also leave some extra information there like uh, what the case is about uh, what's known what's not known etc and then i'll get to them when i can and if i can so with that out of the way i think we should just get started i'm going to start shuffling the deck as soon as i have about a screen full of cards i'm going to stop and take a look so let's get started
Okay, so um, we've got the Three of Wands in the top left over there, which is definitely a camping-like environment. So the Three of Wands is often like uh, trying to make travel arrangements, also uh, looking to travel, looking to go, looking for a new scenery. And this place looks fairly... Um, well, the forest looks pretty thick is what I'm trying to say. So that's very interesting as well. We've got fire and water being balanced on his hand. Normally you would see a globe there, somebody trying to leave, go places, but this almost looks like looking for specific elements to be in the area. And it's a very thick grove type of forest in the background. But what I found more interesting about this first lineup is that we have three cards here with people facing away from us. And that trend continues with this one over here, but let's take a look at these three first. So first we have the Four of Pentacles in reverse. And four pentacles normally uh, trying to balance your finances, etc. like that. But we're looking at somebody's back and it's in reverse. So this is almost like somebody who should have had their finances in order. And is also fairly old, I would think. Because the person over there looks like they've had the better part of their life already uh, passed them by with their gray hair. Uh, and looking wistfully out of the window. They didn't do too well, I think. Also, it's in reverse, so the balance is definitely off. We have next to that, this I believe is the King of Wands, also in reverse. Uh, facing away from us, we have the Ten of Pentacles, also in reverse. So these are, I would think, three male energies that are turning their back on us, or perhaps turning their back on Dior. Normally, uh, the Ten of Pentacles in particular is like an inheritance type of thing. You can see the people standing there uh, and looking at this person, also a gray person, uh, looking at them expectantly because they are apparently about to receive the finances that this person has uh, acquired over their lifetime. And they seem pretty happy about that. They look like they could definitely use it and looking at this guy's hair we see him sitting over here as well with the uh, i guess the inherited wealth on the chair but also looking away from us and uh, in reverse so while we are seeing some passing on of inheritance or some type of family fortunes or something along those lines it's uh somebody is really really looking the other way and it kind of gives me the impression that the older generations like, okay, uh, it's not quite what I had in mind, but here you go. Uh, I'll support you, but I'm not going to um, look or think too deeply about what it is that's happening here. As well as the next generation also not really paying any attention to, I guess, us or Dior. Like... Um, it's a passing on of wealth, passing on of the baton, so to speak, in the relay race under unfavorable circumstances, I think. So let's take a look, by the way, because if you look over here, you got the old man with the dog, all right? So this person is normally uh, feeling a lot better about their situation. They're feeling good about their wealth. They have like they're surrounded by all their natural wealth. The, the mansion is behind them, so to speak, or they see pearly gate to their mansion and they have the loyal uh, dog with them. They're feeling pretty good, but over here, all that lies behind them and the chair itself is kind of worn down as well. So as much as they might want to uh, pass on their wealth, it, it's like, it's not under good circumstances, like I just said already. So, again, with this thing, that's the uh, the financial balance that they were unable to strike. Now, this here, King of Wands, is normally for somebody who acts quickly, but with a well-thought-through plan. And I'm looking at what looks to be a gigantic snake over there around that tree. So, it's like they're ignoring something behind them. Because they need to keep an eye on this gigantic snake that could strike them at any moment. Like they're trying to keep it at bay. They're also not too concerned about it because they're still sitting in their chair. So it's like this snake is there and it's not going to go anywhere. Probably isn't about to strike, but it's definitely there. He needs to keep an eye on it. But that's all he's going to do. And I think, look, on this side we have somebody who looks a lot more regal. And also a lot better 
position as well to act. There's a small salamander at his feet, which represents fire. It might be a little difficult to see, but it's black and yellow down there. So the problem that he may have uh, needed to tame uh, in this position was a lot smaller than what we have here. And not only that, not only is it a much larger problem on this side, we're also looking at it in reverse. So it's something that's definitely not going to go away. And this King of Wands, even though they got their inheritance over here from the previous generation, they are not able to enjoy it because it's something that's always looming overhead. They're literally hanging above their head. It's also nighttime, so it is probably something that also haunts them at night. So this King of Swords is ignoring us but has some really big issues to deal with then we have some deceit on the end here we have some disharmony with the four of wands in reverse we have some working together for uh better or for worse mostly for worse with the three of pentacles and the seven of swords like i said deceit there so there's definitely people working together to uh i guess spin this disharmony around to make it seem like they're actually doing pretty well here but if we look at this guy this is not just a regular person this is actually pan which is uh, a mythical creature that was actually not a very positive character well i guess related to uh what is named bacchus or something i'm holding the card wrong sorry so it's kind of like a, a satire person um a mischievous person and turning it around it almost looks like a happy couple there he's just not wearing a shirt and maybe some dark pants but if you really look closer you'll see that he also has horns so they're like dancing with something that is not positive but they're trying to keep things friendly and they're trying to keep harmony among themselves as they work together to uh, spin a narrative it seems as though and this is very much um calling back to how the parents were described as less than truthful and there's definitely some cooperation happening here there's people working together to keep this situation uh afloat Then these two came out sideways. We have here an unexpected event with the tower being struck and people falling off of it in fire. We do have a dove here. And we also have here the page of swords also on its side. So we are definitely still in the darkness because we are at night here. What does the other side look like? Okay, the other side is the uh, day is setting. And here you see a tower that's being struck that's actually already quite empty. So in this case, it's like um, a sudden change, but you kind of saw it coming because there wasn't too much left to destroy. But on the other end, we really do have the tower looks still complete, but everybody falling from it is on fire on their way down. So actually looking back on that, how we uh, looked at both sides, this almost seems like uh, a play. Like they're pretending that everything to the world because the eye is watching. Well, while the eye is watching, they're pretending that everything is on fire and this was such a sudden thing. But like I said, in actuality, this is something that happened a long time ago. So this could very well be. And also we have the sphinxes here, which is like riddles and stuff like that. So they're not quite truthful there either. And we have the Page of Swords, who is trying to make it seem like all this was very sudden and uh, like they're being truthful. But there is definitely uh, something askew here because they literally landed on their side, not really upright or in reverse. Which so far with this lineup might suggest that even though what actually happened to Dior was probably a big surprise, the way that they're dealing with it is more of a show because this tower over here is showing that actually um, there was a shock but what we're telling you what the shock was is actually something different so we have another person with the back towards us this is the nine of pentacles uh, interesting to note that there is a dove here as well as here and here there's three doves here there might be more doves than other cards, but I'm just kind of noticing the pattern here with the doves. So here we saw it with the playing pretends card. 
It's a reverse. The dove is sitting on the ground, kind of grounded next to the skull of that ram right there. And then over here, we have dove flying away from the tower. So this might be them saying, oh, they disappeared. Look at him. He flew off. We don't know where he went. Oh, what a big surprise. And then we have here the dove sitting on the hand, also looking like they're about to take off. And this might be them pretending as well. Because the person in the tower in the background has a bird of prey that's about to land on their hand, which I feel like they might be about to send them off to catch this dove, or they might be pretending that this is somebody who is distant from them who may have sent their bird of prey after this dove, which I think the dove is representing Dior. So in that sense, it's like, oh, we had everything, and then somebody did something to our child, but they're looking the other way again, which I feel is very close to being deceitful like pretending that they had all of this great stuff going on and everything was fine and then somebody took our dove away like that and also we're looking at a really really big moon we have the moon coming up over here so we'll get to that mm. Just interesting note that the moon is already showing here because the moon is always about secrets so they're pretending things and meanwhile they're hiding things from us just like with the tower like pretending that one thing is happening when actually it's something else and they're spending a lot of time and effort uh lying about that next we have a couple of cards that are like on top of each other uh, this one came out last though we have here the five of pentacles in reverse and this is more show it's more theater once again making things look better than they really are because we're looking at a very decorative household here and they're sitting there pretending that they have all this stuff it's just that this one thing has gone wrong and oh no aren't we sad lonely parents and why isn't anybody helping us that type of thing when we know that in reality uh worse things are happening and the truth is probably still out the door or the truth has gone out the door now we have here the eight of swords in reverse eight of swords being uh, a mental trapment um, they are able to leave at any time as you can see the ropes are very slack and the eagle is here as well which may be the bird as well over here coming back like they're looking at the bird pretending that that's the reason why things are the way they are and i'm guessing the bird in this case would be uh, them trying to pin it on anybody but themselves in which case it, i guess it would be isaac uh, whom they were trying to point out as being suspicious but uh, in reality they can get up and walk away whenever they can and they even have a sword right next to the rope that they could use to cut it if they found that it snagged a little bit even just a little bit so we have uh, the Eight of Wands as well. So with the Mental Entrapment with the Eight of Swords, we also have the Eight of Wands, which is also in reverse. So this is messaging. This, I think, is signaling. Uh, Eight of Swords is often a lot of energy as well and uh, communication. And I think in this case, it's energy and communication put in the wrong things, sent in the wrong direction uh, based on this Mental Entrapment or the mind games that are being played. I think that's what we're looking at mostly. Next two cards, we have the moon in reverse, and we have what looked like the star, but it's actually the empress. So let me grab these two. They seem that both actually have a lot of stars in them, so they're definitely trying to distract people with their shining lights and their secrets. And once again, we see towers that are already empty in the background, so it's almost like people are kind of not buying what they're saying and the mother in particular is looking pretty suspicious here because the empress is often connected to the mother the caring individual the one who's supposed to care for uh you but um they're not looking too good and if we flip them over to look at the other side we have the towers are whole over here and we see that the mother is actually facing away from us, but there is another bird of prey in the air, which I think, and also looking at the skull here, so there's definitely some secrets there. Uh, the bird of prey or the eagle that we saw in the previous card was a reference to Isaac, the friend, I think. Uh, this card and this uh, the combination of cards is kind of showing that even though 
he may be truthful partially he's also hiding something so uh, even though his story has not changed there's definitely something that still needs to be revealed uh, on even on isaac's part that skull in particular is making it look like that and the fact that he is still showing the uh whole tower picture or whole tower point of view rather than the uh, broken ones on the other side which is the actual case maybe that he's hiding something for somebody else's sake or that he just doesn't know the entire story and therefore may not be entirely truthful or not entirely helpful so that's those two now this is mostly just i think from the point of when something has already happened to dior so it's starting to look like uh they were looking to cover something up at this point we don't really know what happened to dior themselves so let's see if we can get any cards about that like what happened to them Oop. okay what do we got ten of material which is pentacles so the ten of pentacles in reverse okay so no inheritance there and no temperance either at least no balance it looks as though he was denied something because they lost their temper it could be that this also it's a bunch of roses over here and people kind of gathering around the roses and they're all kind of sepia which is almost like a past thing people remembering things and this combination of cards makes it seem as though they did something that they really really regretted and also uh, made them realize that the future that they thought they had uh, the future generation that they thought they had is lost because all the flowers here kind of points and the way that they're like gathered around it almost seems like some type of saying goodbye and it is because they lost their temper temperance is in reverse so i think also the the way that they grab their head is like almost a shock thing like they were not expecting to lose their temper in such a way so i think somebody lost their temper and something bad happened to dior as a uh, result of that and they are regretful that it happened but that doesn't take away the fact that it happened so it looks as though they may have lost their temper with dior we have a bunch of cards here actually a whole bunch in here so this might be a very quick read we got a whole ton let's see anyway so we have the five of voices which is uh, the five of swords so we are definitely fighting here it may have started as a verbal altercation uh, they may have found him difficult to handle at some points then we have the five of inspiration which is the five of wands in reverse so first we have an argument that's gonna go out of control because the five of wands is uh, usually almost like um sparring play fighting but i think it went too far and i think they may have uh, applied some type of corporal punishment that didn't uh it went wrong let's just put it that way then we have the six of cups which is almost like a, a memory thing um a melancholy card we're seeing almost like a, a look in the past at some kid that's being um imaginative playing that he's a pilot sitting there and it's almost like they're remembering the good times they had so there's immediate regret there after this bad action that was taken we have again the nine of pentacles this is interesting because it looks as though this person feels very liberated so i'm almost getting like oh yeah that's bad uh we had bad things happening to us but look at the good side of this and i'm not saying that there was something good to that but it kind of feels like they with this nine of pentacles felt like oh but now we have so much more freedom like that type of thing that's almost what i'm getting from this here lineup so far we have the empress which again was supposed to be taking care of them but i think they are broadening their horizons you can see we are looking at planets and stars the whole constellations and like the possibilities are endless maybe they felt like they were now finally free to do certain things we have the five of cups here though which is definitely crying over spilled milk so it's a situation where they're like okay but we can make this work 
even though it was definitely not a positive thing that happened. So we're looking at, um, they may have actually taken that mindset, like there's no use crying over spilled milk. We might as well deal with the hand that we're dealt here. It's getting kind of gloomy in here. So I'm probably going to stop the reading soon because it's getting kind of dark. Oops, sorry. And nine of cups. Yeah. So they are definitely trying to, um, look at the situation from a positive lens. Uh, they're trying to make things work, even though things are not good or they weren't good. And they've tried to, through some type of mental and emotional gymnastics, try to make things work out for them. Let's draw a few more cards because we have a little bit more space. Okay, Ace of Pentacles on its side. Yeah, that pretty much says the uh, same thing that I was just saying. Like, okay, it's not great, uh, but this is a new opportunity and we just need to strike the iron when it's hot, as they say. And make do with what we've got. Okay, no other cards want to drop right now. So yeah, I think this kind of symbolizes what I was just saying, like, okay, this is not a great situation, but we have opportunities here. We can do things now that we weren't able to do before. And therefore we should just uh, strike the iron when it's hot and uh, try to make something out of it. And their new initiatives that tend to come with the aces, I think in this case was their way to try and figure out how to get to the happy, was their way to try and figure out how to get to the happily ever after in the situation, which then led them to uh, this whole spiel that came afterwards, I feel. So the cards are saying that something definitely bad happened to Dior, but I don't think it was a stranger, at least not according to these cards. Something happened within, I think, the household themselves, and then they tried to spin it so that it wouldn't be a bad thing, it wouldn't reflect badly on them. And in such a way that they could at least continue with their uh, future. They may have expected to perhaps start over in another way. And this whole thing was their ticket to doing that. They may have felt burdened by the or in the past. And that's why this reaction came about. Like this is not something that most parents would normally do if you lose a child so suddenly even if you ended up causing that to happen uh, when you didn't intend to do that, like an accidental death type of thing, uh, most parents will not immediately go, but hey, look at the silver lining. So there's a little bit of something there that makes me think that they were not too happy before. And that's why they made this switch, at least according to the cards, they may have quickly switched to this new mindset, of course, allegedly. So that is what I'm seeing for Dior Kunz. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and hope to see you in another video. If you'd like to leave a comment and a like, that really helps the channel along. And I'll see you next time. And bye bye for now.